and welcome to All Saints Church in St. Andrews. We're so pleased to have you worshiping with us today. As you probably know, our church is open once again for services each Sunday at 11 o'clock. The exception will be Sunday, November 1st, when our service will be at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Bishop David Edwards will then ordain Bob Cheatley as a deacon of the Church of God. We hope to have that service uh, posted on YouTube so that you may um, attend it uh, virtually if you're not able to be with us on that day. Thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. God is love, and he that abideth in love abideth in God, and God in him. Please join me in this opening prayer. Blessed Spirit of God, come, come to, to us, us in all thy fullness and power, power to, to clothe us in our nakedness, nakedness to, to enrich us, us in our poverty, to inflame us in our feebleness. feebleness. Be, Be closer, closer to us than breathing, breathing nearer than hands or feet. feet. Live in us and we in thee. As, as the fire gives of itself to the molten iron, iron so give thy presence to us. As the branches are in the vine, so may we abide in thee. As birds mount upward through the air toward the sun, so may we ascend into thy light and light. Enfold our bodies in thy health. Compass our minds with thy wisdom Saturate our souls with thy righteousness, fire our wills with thy might, melt our hearts with thy love. Do everything at all times to make us wholly thine, until thy wealth is ours and we are lost in thee. Amen. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, as we say the general confession together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and, and our mouth shall, shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let us join in saying the Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it 
and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Bob will now read the first lesson. The first lesson is written in the epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians in the fifth chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Here ends the first lesson. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 145, the first 17 verses. We'll read this psalm responsively by the half verse and join in the Gloria at the end. I will magnify thee, my God and King, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Every day will I give thanks unto thee, and, and praise, praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. There is no end of his greatness. One generation shall praise thy works unto another, and declare thy mighty deeds. As for me, I will be talking of thy worship, thy glory, thy praise, and wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy marvelous works. And I will also tell of thy greatness. The memorial of thy abundant kindness shall be showed, and men shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great kindness. The Lord is loving unto all, and his mercies are over all his works. All thy works praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints give thanks unto thee. They show the glory of thy kingdom, and talk of thy power, that thy power, thy glory, and the mightiness of thy kingdom might be known unto men. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words, and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholdeth all such as fall, and lifteth up all those that are down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thy hand, and fillest all things living with plenteousness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. John will now read the second lesson. The second lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning at the first verse. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, who made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burnt up their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they who were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all, as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came to see his guests, he saw there was a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Here ends the second lesson. Please join me in professing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, 
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we as forgive we them that the trespass, trespass against us. us. And lead, and lead us, us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Almighty and most merciful God, of thy bountiful goodness keep us, we beseech thee, from all things that may hurt us, that we, being ready both in body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish those things that thou wouldest have done, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The sermon today will be preached by Bob Cheatley. From the epistle, be filled with the Spirit. And from our gospel reading, all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The epistle lesson of Ephesians 5 and 15 is a warning to be circumspect. I've come to like that word, and I find that I use it a lot in these days. It is a posh way of saying, look around. Don't take things for granted, but rather look at things from all sides. Sometimes we have a tendency to know, um, we have a tendency to assume that we know how things are because we haven't really examined it or considered the situation closely. No one buys a car, as it were, without kicking the tires, all four, front and back, left and right. No one that owns a car and is responsible to see that it is safe should just carry on their merry way without maintaining it properly. So it is with the Christian life. We belong to Christ and we are children of the light in the Lord, having nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. So says the text preceding our lesson. St. Paul behooves us to be wise, not foolish in how we live, but rather that we should understand what the Lord's will is for us. He encourages us to be circumspect and to use our time wisely, especially when so much of what is around us is evil. There is a way of living that is given to excess and even to drunkenness. That is a pathway to debauchery and a wasted life. However, the alternative that Paul offers is to be filled with the Spirit, 
and to speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and to make melody in our hearts to the Lord, being thankful to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus. Now that is a positive image of a life well lived before God. So what is it to be filled with the Spirit? Does that depend on us or is that something that God does? Throughout his epistles, Paul writes of being baptized in the Spirit, living in the Spirit, speaking in the Spirit, ministering in the gifts of the Spirit, and exhibiting the fruits of the Spirit. Is being filled and living in the Spirit a result of our works? For instance, living circumspectly, wisely, seeking understanding, or is that a matter of God's grace? Let's begin to answer that by looking at the gospel lesson for today. Matthew recounts a parable told by Jesus about a king who prepared a wedding feast for his son. This is much like the parable in the gospel according to Luke that we heard on the second Sunday after Trinity. Those who were invited to the feast did not come but they made excuses. In this case, Matthew tells a variation or possibly more of the parable than does Luke. Those invited also did shameful things, including murder, and provoked the king to retaliate. Then the king tells his servants to invite everyone that they can find, both good and bad. So they come and the banquet hall is filled some in proper wedding garments, and some, like the man we read of in the parable, who was not wearing wedding clothes. He was bound and thrown out into the darkness. Those who were first invited were unworthy and did not respond as they should have to the king's invitation. When everyone is later invited, only those who came dressed properly were allowed to stay for the banquet. Most Bible commentators would say that the banquet is the heavenly banquet, an analogy for the kingdom of heaven. The man who came without wedding clothes is one who came without the covering of Christ, which we know comes by the acceptance of Jesus by faith that covers our sins and puts us right with God. A person may feel that they're a Christian because they live in a traditionally Christian country, such as Canada, or because they go to church. However, if they have not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, they may be just as the man who came without the proper wedding garments. In Ephesians, as many of his epistles, St. Paul talks about faith in Jesus as the way by which we are made ready for heaven and for eternal life. In chapter one, he says this, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in Christ with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. The Holy Spirit, is the garment of salvation that all who desire eternal life must put on to be acceptable at the heavenly banquet. We do so by faith in Jesus Christ. The indwelling Holy Spirit is the gift of God for those who are in Christ through faith in Jesus. So it is by God's grace that we receive the Holy Spirit through faith alone, not by any works that we do. Now, when Paul says in Ephesians 5 that we should be circumspect, avoiding evils and excess, and be filled with the Spirit, that does sound like work we must do. I would say that we are invited to cooperate with the Spirit. And yes, there is something that we must do in order to cooperate and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So how do we cooperate with God who wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit so that, we may, so that we may be productive and flourish in our Christian lives? 
The key gumball of the Alpha series says that when we accept Jesus, it is like the pilot light in the furnace of a house being lit. The pilot light, in a way, is like the seal or guarantee of our salvation that Paul describes. However, the pilot light will not heat the house until the owner of the house calls for fuel and turns up the thermostat. Then the heat will go to every room that the ductwork will take it. As followers of Christ, we have both responsibility and control, whether we invite the Holy Spirit into our hearts to turn up the temperature, as it were, to bring light and warmth into our lives and to help resist, resist the evil around us. It's our decision whether we invite the Holy Spirit into only some parts of our lives and how much of ourselves we make available for God's Spirit to influence. Some people may be content to be so-called Sunday Christians, but they march to a different drum during the week. Their work lives and social lives remain outside God's influence and control. The Christian life that is Spirit-led is one is where one is said to be filled with the Spirit. It's something to be desired by every person who wants to experience God's kingdom here and now. Our Lord's prayer is, thy kingdom come on earth as in heaven. We need to be open to all that God in Christ intends for us and to be willing vessels to be filled with his Spirit. Through God's active presence in our lives, we are blessed with an assurance of salvation because we experience the Lord at work in our lives. We become receptive to the gifts of the Spirit, which help us to flourish as members of his body in whatever way or however the Lord equips us. We may also pray and ask God for those gifts that we need to help us. St. Paul tells us about the gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12. Now, the filling of the Holy Spirit is not a one-time event. It is something that we may pray for ongoing. Even today's scripture begins with the sense, brings with it rather, the sense that we should go on being filled with the Holy Spirit. Greek scholars would say it is the present imperative tense of the verb to fill. As vessels, we must be topped up and refreshed because, in a sense, we leak. So our prayer is, come, Holy Spirit. Or as the ancient church would say, veni sancte spiritus. It is a prayer that we should pray often. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us afresh. Amen. God the Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That we all may be one, and that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially for David, our Archbishop, with special intention today for Bob Cheatley, that his upcoming ordination may be an occasion of grace and joy, and for all who minister, both lay and ordained that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, for Elizabeth, our Queen, Justin and Blaine, her first ministers, for John and Kathy, our representatives in government, and for Douglas, our mayor. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, especially in this time of pandemic. Make us mindful of the safety and welfare of others that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, those in hospitals, nursing homes, and other places of care, and those who mourn. Bless those who care for the sick and the needy, and protect those who work at tasks of danger and difficulty. That they may be free from anxiety and distress. Rejoice, we pray, with those who do rejoice, especially those celebrating birthdays this week. Sue, Nathan, David, and Alexander. That they may be richly blessed. Remembering with thanksgiving the lives of Dartwell Irwin, Douglas McFarlane, and Michael Kohler, give to them and all the departed eternal rest. 
and let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy, especially Mary, Mother of our Lord, Andrew and John the Baptist, our patrons, as well as said, Alfred, Simon, Jude, and James, whom we remember this week. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Grant these and all our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, our only Mediator and Redeemer, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pam. It's nice having you back, taking part in our service today. Please join me in a prayer of thanksgiving. O Lord, who alone, who alone can, can do for us the good things we ask and more also. To, to you we give thanks to the high priest and champion of our souls, Jesus Christ, through whom to you be glory and majesty, both now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We say the grace together. The grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ and the love of God, God and, the and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, Ghost be with, with us, us all evermore. evermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you and thank you for being with us today. Have a wonderful week. Oh, yes, yes, yes.